welcome to this next injury series uh, segment that we're putting together. This one is on ankle sprains. Again, if you are listening to this on audio, we will do our best to describe everything and paint a visual picture for you, but it probably would be worth checking out the PowerPoint presentation that we're doing this through on YouTube. Uh, just to make sure if you have any questions or what we're referencing, you can definitely check that out. Um, so with that, we'll hop right into the ankle sprain. Uh, one of the most common injuries that we see out there, uh, you got to imagine it's top five when it comes to sports, along with low back pain and potentially some shoulder issues. So when we take a look at the ankle, the most commonly injured part of the ankle is the lateral ankle. Most commonly, this ATF ligament, uh, this anterior talofibular ligament, um, the CF ligament, the calcaneofibular ligament, uh, those are your most commonly injured. Every once in a while, we'll get to this posterior um, ligament, but it's not very common. If you get that, you've got a very significant ankle sprain. Uh, but typically, when we see somebody who has tweaked an ankle, it is um, this ligament here or this ligament here. Something to take and keep in mind in with this is anytime we sprain an ankle, we also got to worry about these perineal muscles, which you can see the tendons coming down right here. Uh, that's something that you want to be very careful of um, when that happens because you are going to stress the muscles that run up the outside of your fibula. And so that is why we do a lot of our rehab processes because we're helping those to get strong and basically help the strain that we caused on them while we're trying to fix up this lateral ankle sprain of that ligament. Things we got to be careful with, especially on the outside of the the angle of the lateral side is we always want to check the base of this fifth metatarsal um, with that tendon attaching to it. Potential to um, maybe break this um, bone potentially um, and break it off at the end, which is a whole other thing for another day. But we always want to check that. So making sure that we're not overly tender there. It actually should be able to rule out fracture in the ankle, but also at that bone as well the medial side of the ankle is a lot more robust in terms of its ligamentous structures uh, this deltoid ligament that comes around and encapsulates or in basically sets up the strength for the medial ankle is very very strong which is really good for us um, and we joke whenever somebody does injure this area is the good news is that it's really strong so it tends to kind of come back a little bit quicker because there is just so much tissue there um, to hold things in place. The bad news is, is it's really strong, so if you injured it, you probably had a pretty significant ankle sprain. We do see a lot of times people getting pain on the medial side of their ankle with a lateral ankle sprain, and we'll think maybe they somehow sprained both sides. Um, what we think is going on is because of the compressive forces that are happening on the medial side of the ankle when your foot rolls in in a lateral ankle sprain. Think of your classic mechanism that everybody's probably playing in their head right now. We can potentially get some pinching down on some of the structures here, whether it be the ligaments, the tendons of the in medial flexor muscles, the nerve, any of those things through that area could really be what's causing that pain. And so we do need to address that, but most commonly that is what is causing it. Uh, moving on from there, when we start looking up into the upper part of the ankle, this is the dreaded high ankle sprain. Um, this is where you're actually getting some tearing uh, in between the tibia and the fibula with the ligamentous structure there. Um, typically with a plant and full foot gets caught in the ground and your leg kind of rotates over the top of it. Or potentially you get rolled up on um, and your foot gets caught in a weird position but there we're doing some fairly significant damage and you're going to have a bowing of those two bones away from each other and that is what takes a really long time to heal and why high ankle sprains tend to be the things that cause um ankle sprains to go on and on and on when it comes to that injury if you watched our first series on uh, plantar fascia pain you probably recognize some of these next couple pictures but this is looking at just how important it is uh, to look at alignment and arch type and how their stance is and going all the way up the connection to the hip and potentially beyond 
that you can see if you're looking at a high arch person or somebody that has a bunch of supination within their ankle, they're kind of going to be predisposed to being in a tough spot for a lateral ankle sprain. Uh, that can cause uh, just the commonality of it to happen more frequently. And so it is something we want to address either in a prehab type setting or a screening or potentially um, keep in mind as we if something does happen as we're going through the rehab process. Again, just another um image to kind of show where you could get predisposed either to medial um, tension or problems where it could set up for a sprain looking at the far left uh, but also p that same thing where if you have a high arch you are putting more tension on that lateral structures um, to then potentially set you up for a ankle sprain this might also be a familiar picture from plantar fascia one we want to, want to control pain as quickly as possible. And we're going to have a little bit of a speaking out of both sides of our mouth here. So we're going to try and immobilize as much as we need to when it comes to moving around throughout the day because we want to do it without pain. Walking around with a gigantic limp after an ankle sprain for the next few days is not always going to be terrible for your ankle, but it's not going to help. But it probably most likely is going to cause a problem somewhere else. Your hip, your knee maybe your big toe something will because because you're not walking normally so we do like using walking boots as much as we can in order to help get everybody moving and moving so pain free and then we work to progress out of that as that pain goes down we got to go to crutches we got to go to crutches but hopefully we can avoid that uh, because that's not fun for anybody now we just say we try to mobilize as much as we need to that doesn't mean period, end of, story, end of story, all the time. The other part we want to do is get moving pain-free. That's a big part of it, pain-free as much as we possibly can. So when we look at that, it's what can we do in order to create motion that's not going to cause pain. And so that's where something like a Mark Pro um, Compex is out there. Uh, even just doing your own movement, uh, ankle pumps, right, in the ABCs, which we'll talk about in rehab portion of this here just in a minute. Uh, but focusing on doing those things to help with the controlling and the efficient removal and usage of inflammation within your body. Again, all that swelling and inflammation isn't necessarily bad. It is how our body is healing ourselves, but the excess of it is what becomes quote unquote bad and so what we got to do is try and help the body remove that waste gets removed through the lymphatic system lymphatic system's passive in its operation so we either need to mechanically move the stuff or we need to um, create an anchor or a muscle pump by doing movement and mark pro is one of those options um, it is non-fatiguing kind of constant uh, twitching stem uh, if that's something that interests you check them out and if you want to potentially purchase one you can save five percent by using promo code tat uh, just as a heads up there couldn't put um, ankle treatment in there without putting something on kinesiology tape uh, using this spider finger like taping procedure um, as you can see in this specific case it potentially helped clear some of the bruising um, that you see in an ankle uh, for us and what we think is bruising doesn't really tell us a whole lot other than you ruptured some blood vessels it doesn't really help with the severity it doesn't really tell us anything like that that we're going to look more at just basically your function potentially how much swelling you have uh, but just because it bruises or doesn't bruise doesn't tell us a lot of information um so we just try not to you to worry about it too much could you use something like this to help potentially remove some of that coloration from the surface sure absolutely you can is it actually doing a whole lot other than removing it from the surface we can't comment on and know specifically uh, so it's one of those for us like it's not going to hurt the patient in most cases at least we haven't heard of it doing that how much it's going to help, we don't really know. Um, it's not something that we actively utilize, uh, but we do keep it kind of as a tool in our toolbox if uh, we potentially need it. Other ones to look at at some initial care and treatment. This is one that we've focused on more and more over the years. Um, when you 
sprain your ankle. There is a bone um, that sits between your calcaneus and your tib and your fib, and that is your talus. And that bone slides in and out as you point your toes and pull your toes back. So as you point your toes, it slides out, gives you some more range of motion. As you pull your toes up or dorsiflex, you get that bone to slide back uh, to help stabilize the joint. And that's our closed pack position. If you sprain your ankle, and I can go back to that image that you would typically notice or typically have in your mind when you see a common ankle sprain and we're usually plantar flex, maybe turned our big toe in just a little bit so we're inverted and then the injury happens. Well, when that occurs, that bone is in its open pack position, so kind of moved out, and potentially doesn't always go back in to that closed pack position as efficiently as we would like it to. That could be because of swelling, could be because of just changing some of the mechanics because of the injury. And so what this is showing in these two pictures is looking at doing a relocation of that bone and helping mechanically guide it back to working properly uh, in a couple different versions. One is on the bottom right, uh, basically taking two fingers, palpating the bone, kind of help holding it in place and guiding it posteriorly as we're moving the ankle into dorsiflexion and pulling toes towards you. Um, the one on the upper left isn't exactly the one that we would utilize, but is the only picture we could find using a, it's called a speeder board, um, typically seen in chiropractic offices, but also in other um, professions to help um, quote unquote adjust or uh, mobilize that area and get it to be moving properly. The other way, like we said, with the lymphatic being a passive system to get going is to mechanically move it. This could be massage. It could be Normatec compression boots or some version of that where we're kind of mechanically trying to push that um, extra inflammation and swelling out and get the bo aid the body in removing it and doing it in an efficient manner. Could also use something like the voodoo band, which is pictured here, which is basically just a long rubber band wrapped around to add some compression. We work through some ranges of motion, get things moving as much as we possibly can with that. And then we take that off in order to help kind of flush that area out and through that compression, um, increase how much of that we are able to remove. Using these, you have to be careful. You are basically per putting on a version of a tourniquet. So if something, if you already use this on your own or the practitioner, if at any point your foot starts going numb, things start not feeling good, so on and so forth, take it off. Don't fight through it. Take it off. Please uh, don't injure yourself while you're trying to help yourself heal. Modalities that work. If you're looking at this live, you see works kind of in a mini parentheses. Um, if you're listening, it is. It's kind of in not parentheses, uh, in quotes. Um, we don't necessarily have our go-to. Uh, we really like combination therapy, and here we're showing it working on the calf. Again, couldn't find one for the ankle. But what we like about it is we can move the stem around. We can find the areas that are sore and tender and really find those areas and potentially if we do work into the musculature we can get some twitching which again based on our theory of the you know working with the lymphatic system and creating a muscle pump that would be something we could utilize um, so that is one that we do like to go to um, how effective uh, we'll have to leave that up to the patient and the practitioner but it is something that we keep in mind Along with that, we would utilize, uh, this is a shortwave diathermy. It looks like a very old school machine, but they are very effective. A um, bunch of different settings on there. One ranging from controlling swelling and inflammation to then working into the subacute process to then working all the way back to full heating. Uh, this is going to work as almost like a big ultrasound head using different wavelengths to go in and work from the inside out basically to help stimulate the body to create the best healing environment available in order to help that person get back and get moving so we will utilize that along with our coordination of treatment and rehab taping versus bracing this is a hot topic for us personally um, this is personal preference the research kind of goes one way then the other um, people will argue that tape unless you're using um, some more expensive um, tapes other than just regular athletic tape 
is going to turn into an expensive sock as soon as they start sweating and they get it out there and doing things. Um, we've seen that in the fall camp of football and soccer. It just It's hard to keep that fresh when it's 90 degrees out and humid. And then you got a substantially sized person running around and sweating doing it. So we do lean towards the ankle brace. Again, that depends. Um, there's so many options out there with tape that if your budget allows for it, you can really do some powerful and strong things with it. Uh, and that's great. And if that works, it works. Um, for us, we go to bracing first. We'll use tape as an adjunct if we're trying to control for something specific. That is the great part about tape is you do get to customize it. You get to do exactly what you want to per that person's ankle. And so that may be something that you need to do um, with a given athlete based on what they have going on. This is an extremely simple version. Um, this isn't a complete tape job, but with that and applying tape, if you're not applying it properly, and that's in quotes, you're not going to get the max benefit. So you got to have someone who's skilled and knows what they're doing to try and accomplish that in order to get your maximum benefit from it. There are versions of it. Not everybody can just go with the tried and true um, standard athletic taping job. We will customize it based on the need of the sport. So that could be for cross country. We would tape their ankle very different than we would tape an offensive lineman in football, just given the protection that we need and the demands that that sport um, presents. So that is something to keep in mind again with taping. And then again, we'd be remiss if we didn't throw in kinesiology tape and what that could potentially do to it or for you. For us, kinesiology tape isn't a supportive, again in quotes, structure um, or tape to utilize in order to help like structurally support uh, the ankle. It is a proprioceptive reminder, which can be beneficial in rehab, potentially coming back, um, unless, you know, cutting and um, explosive sports, again, potentially in like distance running. Uh, but it is something that you could utilize, but we would never go and try and support an ankle by putting kinesiology tape on it and saying that that's going to hold everything in place. Rehab, as we had mentioned earlier, move as early as you can, as much as you can. Um, could be as simple as ankle pumps, right in the ABCs with your big toe um, as many times as you need to without causing pain. Then moving into some very simple banded exercises, focusing on general strength. We really want to make sure, again, if it's lateral ankle sprain, we're working on eversion or moving foot to the outside to work those perineal muscles. And then we're going to get into balance and proprioception, trying to get all the muscles and everything to work together to help bring uh, stability back to that joint. We mentioned it before, I found a little in the plantar fascia one, found a little bit better response or picture for what we're trying to talk about getting weight placement on the foot properly, getting it spread across the heads of the metatarsals and the heel, making sure that that is going to keep everything um, nice and flat, weight distributed well, make all the muscles in your foot and your lower leg work as they're supposed to to help keep you stabilized. And then it's turning into function. This is just a basic star, star excursion test got to tailor what you're trying to do in rehab to what you're trying to accomplish. So again, we're in a rehab, a runner very differently than a soccer player or a tennis player because we have to focus on so many other angles with a soccer or tennis player. Whereas if it's a track athlete, that's a distance runner, there's just, there's less variables we have to control for. We want to rehab and everything, but we have to make our rehab tailored to what we're trying to actually accomplish. To kind of wrap things up, kinetic chain, same picture from before. Got to look up and down, see what their foot looks like, see if that's something that we need to address in order to prevent them potentially from having an ankle injury or um, from having uh, something that reoccur if they already hurt their ankle. Focusing on the entire body hips we're big on rehabbing hips uh, there is good research out there that you can find that if you do sprain an ankle depending on the length of the injury you can get some inhibition in the hips and the glutes and how they fire so that's something we don't want to forget in our rehab process and as we're bringing them back to participation 
addressing everything good control at the hips can help lead to good control at the lower part of the body at the ankle and the foot so that's something we do not want to forget so kind of bring it all back together we want to mobilize as much as we need to to control pain that is our big thing there we want to move as pain-free as possible when we can that could be as simple as scrunching your toes pumping your ankle uh, just moving it forward and back all those things in order to try and stimulate as much of that uh, natural healing process as we possibly can all those are important with it from there coming back taping versus bracing it's going to be really personal preference tape is a lot of customized things but it can get expensive ankle brace you get to use over and over and over again can hold up a little bit better under hot and humid conditions so different things to consider there and make sure your rehab is functional we hope you enjoyed this um, injury series focusing on the ankle again we'll have more coming out um, over the next eight weeks so stay tuned for those and if you have any questions feel free to shoot us a message facebook instagram info at clinicallypress.com uh, if you have any questions with that and we'll be happy to answer them thanks everyone